Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us, and welcome to our seventh se session on how to get a million views. My name is Rachel Cohn. I'm Insider's lead video producer for Facebook Reels, and I'm so excited to be here today. We have an amazing panel for you. It's all of my favorite creators. I've followed them forever. So we have Challenge Shashan, Sh Shan. sorry about that, Cass Holland, Serena Kerrigan, and Nava Rose, and they're all experts in short form vertical video and have done an amazing job at building their personal brand. And I cannot wait for them to share all of their knowledge with you today. So before we hear from our lovely panelists, I'm gonna give a very brief introduction about Insider and some of our learnings about short form vertical video. Then we will have an interview section with all of our panelists, and at the end, we'll have a question and answer session. So as we go through today's presentation, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat function, and we will get through all of them at the very end. So just to give you a quick background on myself, I started working at Insider in 2017 as an associate producer. Back then, we were really focused on like 90-second videos for Facebook about crazy foods, giant hamburgers, things like that. Um, so I did that for a while. Then I became a showrunner of some of our longer form series, which focused on subjects like food, travel, style. And so since I've started at Insider in 2017, um, my videos have racked over 900 million views from the videos that I've made here. And in 2022, I became the lead video producer for Facebook Reels. So at Insider, we have a team dedicated to short form vertical video, and my job is finding what we're gonna film, filming it, producing it, editing it, and then we post it on Facebook and Instagram Reels, TikTok, YouTube Shorts, and more. So you can see two examples here of videos that I've made recently. One of them is about a giant bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich, which got over three million views. And the other one is about Dominique Ansel's beautiful chocolate croissants, which got over two million views. And so just to give you a better sense of the kind of work that our team does, this is a highlight reel of some of our work from the past year. Me and my friends went all over Brooklyn and Manhattan to find the best pizza in New York. I scoured New York in search of the perfect croissant. I'm Jewish, I live in New York. I really don't know what other credentials I need to judge a bagel. Rice is quite common when phones are because water damage because they'll stick the phone in rice. That doesn't work, by the way. Hello, I am Jacques Torres from Jacques Torres Charpenet. Great show. I'm a hat maker, making hats now for about four years. I am a self-proclaimed burger connoisseur. Lafayette Bakery released these stuffed croissants and they went viral. I'm here at Elm Street Diner in Stamford, Connecticut. We're here in the worst place on earth, Times Square, to go eat a sandwich. Well, good. Jeez. Wow, that was great. I'm inspired to make more short form vertical videos. <laughs> So whether we're talking about long form or short form video, Insider has five main tenets to our approach to storytelling. So our first and more, most important thing that we care about is called the hook shot. It's basically like the first three to five seconds of a video. It's like putting the most compelling visual footage there to draw people in. So you can see a good example of that here on this video I made recently called Making Celebrity Inspired Cookies, which they made a white lotus themed cookie and you can see they use a projector system to draw them and that visual really stuck with people. It got over 16 million views and that's the main tenant to Insider's success from our video team and our Facebook Reels team now. Second thing is that we make sure that all of our videos have valuable takeaways that people can bring up in conversation like, oh my gosh, I saw this video and I learned X, Y, and Z. Um, we make sure that every video is filmed in a high quality way. We pursue quality subjects and we also make sure that the way we're telling stories and the people who are in them are being really authentic on camera. And the last thing is that we want to make sure that there's a reason why we're telling every story. So 
For short form video, an example of how you could do that would be to have a headline telling you why this topic ma matters. You can see here, for example, we did a video about turning bananas trees and recycling them into menstrual pads um, in India, which is not only like a sustainable, amazing thing, but helpful for a large portion of the population there. And that really resonated with people and got almost 60 million views. Okay. so. Just to recap, this is the seventh and final session of our How to Get a Million Views series. This slide here um, will link you to all of our past topics we've discussed so far. So you can see we did a session on visual storytelling, monetization, distribution of videos, and more. If you haven't seen our past sessions, I highly recommend you go and click this link because there's a ton of really valuable, interesting information in them with great panelists, and the recording for this session will also be live on that site afterwards. Okay, it's time for the more exciting part, which is talking to our panelists. Yay, hooray. <laughs> okay, so we have four amazing panelists. Like I said, I love all of these creators, so I'm gonna have them each introduce themselves briefly. So why don't we start with Nava? <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Nava Rose. I am a DIY and fashion content creator. I'm usually known as the girl that has too many clothes. So yeah, that's me. And um, I like to focus on sustainability and the environment when it comes to fashion and DIY. Amazing. Uh, Cass? Hi, I'm Cass Holland. I am a Las Vegas cart girl who vlogs her work day in the life. I like to decorate, make fun, sparkly drinks, and <laughs> make fun of golfers. <laughs> uh, Shallon? Hi, my name is Shallon. I'm a content creator from Barbados. I've been creating content for probably like five years now. Um, I'm an author. I draw. I'm not good at it. But I kind of <laughs> just do whatever I feel like that day, and it's really fun. <laughs> Serena? Hi guys, I'm Serena Kerrigan. I am from New York City and I am a content creator, but also an entrepreneur. I help my audience become more confident within themselves. And I also have a series of like dating card games that have been really successful. Amazing. So obviously starting your own content creation is difficult. No one has success right away. So what were your videos like when you started and what did you change or start doing that helped you gain a bigger audience? So I'd like to ask this to all of you, but why don't we start with Cass? Um, so I found that what really made my videos take off and my first viral video was actually my second video um, of like just being authentically me. I was showing my work day. I had tried like the trends and different filters like that we all try, but my second video of just showing my life really took off. And I was like, is this like a glitch in the system? Like what? But people were really interested in it. So I had the choice. Do I want just one viral video or should I like keep this going? And I chose to keep it going. So. Amazing. Uh, Serena? I um, think that my first started I think after we got the uh, the dancing out of our system, <laughs> I, I'm, I don't know, that's how I started for like a hot sec. I wasn't very good at it. I really started making videos that I needed for myself. And I think that that's my most viral videos are always videos that like, I'm really like confidence coaching the audience, but really I'm just coaching myself. And so I think that's really what the best content comes from when it's authentically you. And it's, it's almost something that you would want to enjoy yourself. So yeah. Amazing. Shallon? Um, what were my videos like when I started out? Um, the issue with me was that I have way too many interests and hobbies, so I kind of didn't really know what to do. So I just started out by talking. I would make these like random skits. I was working like a normal job at the, like a nine to five. So I would just, I don't know if something happened at work, I'd come talk about it or make it a skit. And then I think after a while, I've always been a makeup artist. I've been a makeup artist since I was like in high school. I just started integrating that a little bit, um, doing my makeup online and people would be like, oh, that's actually good. How'd you do that? And I'd be like, you wanna know how I did that? And then tutorials were born and then, you know, vlogging was born and cooking videos. And then I kind of just started doing everything. <laughs> 
Awesome. Nava, what about you? For me, uh, I would say one of the videos that really popped off for me was one of my fashion videos where I showed like what I would wear as a Disney princess. And that honestly just came about because I would watch these movies and I would look at the characters and think like, I would totally dress them differently. And I think, I think at the time I was like, let me make a video about it. And I didn't know that there was a market where people were interested in something like that and seeing how other things would be styled. And yeah, it really took off. And I was like, I guess people like seeing different outfits. So let's make more of these. <laughs> That's awesome. So uh, next I'm going to share some videos from each of you and ask you guys some pers more personal questions about your own brand. So I'm going to start with a video from Cass, who, like she said, makes videos taking you around in her golf cart, showing you her job selling drinks to golfers. And besides being super cute and fun, I think one of the big things that make Cass's videos so appealing is the authenticity we get from them, you know, hearing the things golfers say to her when they don't know that we're listening and seeing her honest reactions to them. And even her sharing like how much money she's making in tips throughout, like makes you feel like you're one of her close friends getting personal access to her life. So I'm gonna show you what I mean with showing you one of her videos. So oh, I just got to the course and I'm like, gee, nobody's here. We had a frost delay, which means they're not gonna start for a while. So I have some time to get the cart ready. Good morning. There she is. Shut up. Coffee. Well, that didn't take very long. It's a beautiful day. Just a little chilly. Good morning. Start ripping clothes off. Oh. How are you? So this guy just asked me for two fireball shots and a map to my house. A map? How old are you? Bang, are you Black Friday? Cause I'm trying to see what your deal is. Go girl, you the deal girl, you the deal. <laughs> Just got my $25 tip from a golfer. He always tips me really nicely. But he said he's not playing so good today because he burnt his finger on the turkey yesterday. That was his excuse. <laughs> uh, I could have played so many more videos. They're all so funny. But um, you built an amazing brand out of being authentic with your audience. So for people who are less comfortable or have less experience filming themselves or talking to the camera, what tips would you give them on how to become more comfortable doing that? I would say the most effective way. So when I first started, like I was not comfortable in front of the camera. I did not like the sound of my voice. Like it just cringed me out. Um, so if you want to do this and you want to be a content creator, like you got to get over that. Like have the phone up, talk to the camera, act like you're just ranting to one of your friends. Like keep going, keep going, keep trying, keep talking to the camera until you get over that. And then it will just come naturally and you'll be more comfortable with it. Stay true to yourself. Awesome. Great advice for anyone, no matter what, honestly. But uh, what strategies do you use to engage with your audience? And b how do you think you've done that to build a loyal following? Um, I really... Uh, like I said, like just being yourself and everyone is relatable in their own way. Um, there's something relatable about anyone. So just like replying to comments, going to the commenters page, like interacting with their stuff, seeing what people are commenting and like showing that, making a video about that, um, just kind of giving them what they are looking for. <laughs> Amazing. Um, so I'm going to show now a video from Nava. Um, one thing I think that Nava has done really well is find a niche that people really connect with, um, which is giving her interpretation on style and fashion. She's really good at taking trends or things from popular culture and putting her own personal brand on it. And I'm going to show you what I mean now. <laughs> Everyone to picture the thing they fear the very most and turn it into something funny. Next, Rob. Smell like my great aunt Tessie. Smell like my great aunt Tessie. Hey, she's only interested in you because she thinks you're the chosen one. I am the chosen one. Okay, sorry. Um, ridiculous. Ridiculous. This class is ridiculous. Very good. Quiet, please. Shut it! Awesome. I love that video. <laughs>
So um, you make a lot of types of videos, but you're mostly focused on fashion videos. You've done a fantastic job of finding your niche. How did you decide what you wanted your brand to be about and how important is having a specific focus to your success? I honestly, for like a big answer for those questions would just be what I genuinely truly feel. So I knew I had a lot of clothes. I knew I really liked fashion and I knew that I uh, had kind of like the style that I was really into was kind of specific. And so I kind of really leaned into that and created my brand around something that encompassed me because it's honestly like the easiest way to do it. Like something that is genuinely you, you know, you know how to do that very well. And so I think that's very important as a brand is being genuine to yourself and your interest because out there, there will be other people that find that same interest. And so I think if you really want to hone in on something, hone in on yourself and what you truly like. It's a great answer. You kind of already answered this, but do you have tips for people who are like either have a lot of interests or like are having trouble figuring out like what to make videos about on how to find their own niche? Yeah, I mean, I would say to like any like random idea that you have, whether or not I tell a lot of people this all the time, whether or not you feel like anyone would watch that specific video or will have any interest in that video, I say put it out there anyways because it will find the right people and it will find like a community that does appreciate it. And then from there, it'll grow and grow and grow. So, I mean, I had no idea that people were interested in what Disney princesses would look like in my style, but <laughs> it turns out that people did and... I was able to grow a following from that. So you just never know who's going to see your video, even if it's like the quirkiest idea. <laughs> That's great. OK, I'm going to now show a video from Serena Kerrigan, who was on a billboard in New York City this year, um, has recently launched her own streaming service. She released her own card games about dating. She had a collab with Joe and the Juice this year. She's done a great job of making a brand out of being confident and telling other women how to do the same. And I'm going to show you a glimpse of that now. I'm going to tell you my number one secret to confidence. I know this shit works because I used to be really insecure. Every single morning I wake up and I look at myself in the mirror. I talk to that person in the mirror like she's my best friend. No, 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 no. This isn't an affirmation. This is a conversation. It's a dialogue. It's recognizing that that person in the mirror is a person that I should value, love, and respect. That person in the reflection is the only person who has been with me and will be with me for every second of my life. From my first breath until my very last. This is why I acknowledge that person. I hype her up every single day. I tell her how beautiful, strong, and smart she is. And when she's feeling upset, I cheer her up. This is why I never speak badly about her. I never look at her and criticize her and wish that she was someone else. Because she's my person. She's my best friend. And you should be yours too. Damn. <laughs> Damn, that still hits. That was the, you know, three years ago I made that video. I had a lot of fake eyelashes and a blonde bob. But I give the same advice then that I do now. Agreed. I feel empowered just always when I watch all of your videos. But um, part of being an influencer is discovering and creating your brand. And you've obviously done an incredible job of that. So what are your tips on turning your life and personality into something that real brands want to partner with? Um, I think it's about seeing yourself, your online persona as a character. That's what helped me. So like that girl in the video is like my alter ego. Like <laughs> I'm Serena right now, but I'd say that's SFK and which stands for Serena F and Kerrigan. I don't know if I can curse from her. So I said that thing, but I, I think, think it's the, okay. It's Serena F and Kerrigan. Like that's her. Right. And I think like what was helpful for me was creating this character. It's like, what does she do? What does she drink? What's her opinions on confidence? Like, what does she wear? Like, I really like built her as a character. Like she's larger than life, obviously. Like she's going to smack confidence into you, you know, like she's like the Regina George for making you feel good about yourself it was a really a character I created. And then everything feeds into that character, which is how I created the tagline, do it for the plot, because that's <laughs> something SFK would do. She would just like do something and be like, why it was for the plot. So it's really like everything feeds in and every brand collab, every video I make, like has to go back to like this girl and writing for her. 
And I think the interesting thing is like, that's not, you know, now I've evolved a lot. And like, that's even just seeing that video, I'm like, oh my God, like that's really SFK. Like, I think that I've grown more into myself and my content has reflected that. Like I'm a little less of the character, but I think if you're beginning, it's very helpful. Instead of being like, what's my personal brand? You can be like, okay, I'm just gonna create a character and like, what does she like to wear? If I was writing a script for her, like what are all these things? What products does she use, et cetera? Yeah. Why do you think um, brands resonated with like everything you've done so much? Well, some brands. Some brands. Um, some brands don't like the F word and that's okay. I think that people resonate with it because I think at the core of what I do is I wanna empower people to remind them that they are the main character of their lives. And so like, I think at its core, there's a lot of like social impact there. Um, and there's a lot of storytelling. I think bottom line, like it's the same way I thought, I think of my personal brand as a character, like everything I do tells a story. Every video I make needs to tell a story. And I think no matter what kind of creator you are, if you can have a, big, a great hook, like you said earlier, a great hook and then a beginning, middle and end, like you'll have a great video. And so, and you know how to tell a story because that's what human beings know how to do. Mm. So it's that it's great advice um amazing everyone has had amazing answers so far i feel like this is super helpful for me too um as someone who like started being on camera recently for insider like it's always good to like hear tips from other people you know um okay last but not least is a video from shallon who i always love to watch she's so effortlessly funny and authentically herself on camera and it was hard choosing a video from her but i decided that i was going to show you a recent example of how she doesn't stray from being herself when she does a brand partnership video this is a recent one she just did and i think that's what makes her so good at them so let's watch I put the Dove Beauty Bar to work. I heard it was giving facial cleansing, makeup removal. I said, oh, yeah? Give me that. So I tried it over the course of a multitude of days and nights. Also, to keep it franky-wanky with you, I'm quite familiar with the Dove Beauty Bra. It's a makeup brush cleaning cleanser. <laughs> and I was going to dabble. And I did dabble. And I dabbled and dibbled. Also, very pH balancing. And my skin does not feel dry or like it's being stripped of all of the moisture she's got. Very much putting in that leg and back work with supporting that skin barrier. Okay? Try for yourself. And let me know what you think. <laughs> I love that video. Me too. <laughs> Thank you. So um, most content creators make the majority of their money from brand deals. So how long did it take you for brands to start offering you deals? Ooh, how long did it take to get brand <laughs> deals? Years. Um, <laughs> I've been creating for a long time. And I think a very common misconception is that numbers equate to money. And that is not true. Just because you have a lot of followers, that does not mean you're going to have a lot of money immediately. It doesn't mean <laughs> that at all. Um, you have to be patient. For a long time while I was creating content, I was still working nine to fives. Um, money didn't start to roll in until I think, I would say, I would say once I genuinely had a team behind me that just was a little better at, you know, negotiating and things like that, I would get offers here and there, but I didn't really know what I was doing behind the scenes with that stuff. You know, I was working at like call centers. I have no clue how to negotiate with a huge brand. But then, you know, when you start to build like a small team and you start to have people that, you know, do that, like that's their profession is negotiating and going and talking to these people. It, they kind of immediately changed my life overnight, to be honest <laughs> with that, because I kind of really, I really was not making money for a long time. Um, and I think that's pretty common amongst like a lot of my mutuals and my peers in this space is a lot of us really didn't start to make money until the more recent years, especially if we've been online longer, mm -hmm. because I think especially previously, it was a lot harder to make money um, as a micro creator at the time. Um, I think it's a lot easier now to just kind of like jump in and honestly jump into brand deals and things like that in this current state. But that was something I had to, I didn't get that end of the stick. I had to, I had to wait. <laughs> quite a while but then I got there and honestly I mean it's it's pretty good now I'm very appreciative now why do you think it's easier now than it was when you started I think now it's easier because before numbers did dominate this industry mm -hmm. like if you could just get a lot of views and have a lot of numbers it did it you could get there a couple years ago but now I think you can make yourself the brand and I think now brands are a little more interested in that in the fact that you know, you have really big creators now that don't necessarily have like a specified niche, but they still do a lot of brand work because 
brands just like them. And now you can become that as a creator with a couple hundred thousand followers or a creator with like 30,000 followers, which I would say before it wasn't that easy to make money with smaller numbers like that. Brands kind of wanted the millions and the millions of views. And now I'll see ads and then I'll go to their page and they only have a couple thousand followers. And I'm like, you know what, period. Like, I really wish it was always like that (laughs) because I think I'm always more willing to, I'm always willing to like see someone. And as long as you can talk me into buying it, I don't care what numbers you have behind you. Like, you know what, you did that. I'm very susceptible to influencers and advertising, like extremely. Me too. (laughs) Me too. I agree. Um, How do you decide what brands to work with and have you ever turned any down? Yes, I've turned a couple down. Um, I decide honestly based on what I feel like I align with the Mm -hmm. best. Most brands I work with, I've already used their products or I was just very open to trying to use their products. I think being very honest with brands and being honest with my team is always why that's very possible for me. If a brand is, you know, more leaning on the side of we want you to say this and say you enjoy it, we'll go back in and be like, "Mm, I don't really know if we want to get online and say that when that's (laughs) not true. I think it'd be better to just be like, hey, it's my first time using this and kind of talk to people authentic, authentically instead of like pretending that Mm -hmm. Pretend. I don't. I don't pretend at all. I don't like to pretend, and I don't want to be promoting <laughs> pretending. Right. Um, even with the most recent video that you just played, I've been using that that beauty bar for years. So that was such an easy video to make because <laughs> I genuinely used it for so long. How did it feel when they were like, "Will you promote this?" And you're like, "Yeah, I've been using this." <laughs> I was like, "Little do you know <laughs> that I have thirty at my house already." <laughs> And this is the easiest video I've ever had to make. (laughs) Do you have tips on staying authentic while you're promoting brands in a video? Yes, yes. Um, Staying authentic, I think, really just kind of a little bit repetitive of what I said before, just really being honest with the brands. And a lot of brands are willing to listen to you more than you would assume. And you also just never know until you ask. Sometimes you really can't come back to a brand and be like, hey, you know, I think I'd rather just say this or I'd rather, would it be okay if I did this? And honestly, a lot of the time they're like, yeah, honestly, that's totally fine. And <laughs> I'm just a big, I'm a firm believer in you. The worst they could say is no, and you never right. know until you ask. So I always ask. And if the answer is no and it doesn't align, I'm very willing to step away. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. <laughs> okay. Like I said, guys, these are great answers. I'm having a great time. I hope everyone's having a great time like me. So I'm going to go back now to asking all of you a few more questions. Um, I have a few more I want to ask all of you guys, and then we will get to the Q&A after that. So I feel like this is a really good question that I wrote, guys. (laughs) What's a mistake that you made early on in your career that you would advise people not to do when starting off as a creator? So let's start off with Serena. Of course. I think, you know, when you're seeing financial success, it's you, the immediate reaction might be to expand like, oh my God, I need a team and I need to pay for this and that. And I just would, I would say, don't like really try to be smart about, you know, your spending and, and, and try to just, you know, as you're growing, really think about just being really strategic, I think is important. Can you expand on that a little more? Um, on like why you th- why you think that's important? Because you don't want to you know you want to be making money and you want right. to have savings and you don't want to spend all of it. And I just think like I know I, I see this more as an entrepreneurial thing, but I think in a way creators are entrepreneurs. So mm-hmm. I think that content is a business. But I think like you know when you're making money and, and you're gaining following, I think it's just easy to think like oh I have to expand. I have to like jump on this. I have to do everything. And it's just about really taking your time. And this is, doesn't necessarily need to even be about spending, but also about what brand deals that you're picking, right. you know, and, and being really authentic because audiences are so smart now. Like they just know, they know when something isn't authentic to you and they're going to call you out on it and they're not going to want to follow you to begin with. So I would just say like, as you're growing, just like take your time. There's no rush. That's great advice. Uh, Cass, what about you? Um, I would say a problem that I ran into was putting too much pressure on myself and on like the video I was creating. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know the saying is, uh, quality over quantity, but when you're first starting out and making videos, you should think quantity over quality because you want to get like your videos out there. If you're putting too much pressure on 
you know, like you're retaking, do like, doing like a retake of this certain clip that you want to insert and it's just gonna be bad for your mental health. You're trying too hard. And especially since like for me in particular, I was doing my day job while I'm trying to make a video and those just would collide mm. and it would kind of drive me crazy throughout the day. But just get your video out there. Don't try to be perfect. Making it perfect is what's going to ruin it. So. Yeah, I think that's really good advice. I've run into that a lot of times of like, you can spend so much time trying to make a video better and it's like, sometimes it's the thing that you put, spend the least time on that like blows up the most, I feel like. And it's the stuff that I'm like, let me make sure everything detail is right. And it's like, okay, no one watched this. So I completely agree. Yeah. <laughs> um, go with the first take. <laughs> Sorry, say it again. Well, go with the first take. And if you tripped, post that. Post that take. <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> Shalon, what about you? Um, a mistake I made early on, um, honestly, kind of similar to what was said. Honestly, just don't take yourself too seriously. Mm. People, you want people to like you for the person that you are, not the person that you're going to create for them to like. Because when you're no longer interested in playing that persona, people are still going to expect it because that's right. kind of what you fed them. I learned my lesson with that early on. Um, I wanted to change it up and kind of be a little more myself and people kind of were just accustomed to you know the persona I had and they kind of hard had a difficult time mm -hmm. changing with me um I'd say don't compare yourself I think I did a lot of comparing myself to other people and my peers that were kind of you know similar numbers it's like why aren't I doing that good or why didn't I go to that and you didn't because you weren't supposed to you know like mm -hmm. things happened at your pace things happened at their pace you know I'm sure they were comparing themselves to people too um I'd say don't niche down too hard don't worry too much about that like you like some other people said do what you like like just enjoy it and your niche will find you if you even need a niche like a specific niche don't let perception make you think too much about you know what people think about you or what you think you look like on camera if it makes anyone feel better I don't even see myself when I film I film with a bad camera so <laughs> I have no idea what I look like until I'm looking at it later in editing and it's too late to go back <laughs> and it's like you know what whatever that's what I recorded that's what they're gonna get <laughs> That's really funny. Nava, what about you? Um, for me, kind of going off of Shallon's answer, um, specifically for me, I would say um, don't worry too much about numbers specifically. Like I would be that type of content creator that would look at constantly like my following and like how many likes I'm getting, how many comments I'm getting. And I think it really um, messed with my mental health and it made it gave me this like idea that I wasn't good enough right. or this and that and so there's a period of time where I just like every time I would go onto my Instagram homepage or like TikTok homepage I would put a finger over the following just so I wouldn't you know focus on that and then just like it, it just would be out of sight out of mind and then one day like I'll look at it and be like oh okay well I do have like a following that's growing which is nice so it's it's better to just let it happen and let it ride because people will follow you unfollow you based on like you have no control over those things and so it's not something that you should you know like i guess worry too much about but yeah it's good advice also i also was it's hard it's hard to not look at numbers like it's very addicting to like watch them update in real time etc but it's mm -hmm. also really great advice um okay we are ahead of schedule a little, so I'm gonna ask you all a few more questions and then we will get to the Q&A, but feel free to, you know, go into detail if you desire, no pressure. <laughs> so um, uh, I'm gonna ask a kind of general question first, like what advice would you give to aspiring influencers who are just starting out? Like if you had like one piece of advice to give them, what would it be? Uh, Cass? Um, I would say, be yourself. That's like what I live by. That's what I tell people. Um, <clears throat> if, if you are a dirty girl and you want to <laughs> do like a clean girl, <laughs> you want to be like, um, you know, ASMR, like get ready with me, like clean girl, but you're not a clean girl. Like there's nothing wrong with being a dirty girl. Like people want to see that too. And I mean, you're only going to be able to fake it it for so long eventually we're gonna see your crumpled up cheeto bag in your bed like <laughs> so this people will like the dirty girl that you are if you 
are a girly girl and you're like, well, let's see, goth girls are blowing up on this platform. I'm going to do that. I'm going to redo my wardrobe, my makeup. Then you're just going to risk running into an identity crisis. And there's plenty of people that want to see the girly girl stuff. Do that. Be yourself. Um, just if you're yourself, you don't have to remember like, like, lies or like what you said you were (laughs) and that makes it much easier and all you'll have to do is set up your phone and press record and be yourself that's great great advice um what about you shallon advice i'd give i would say the most generic advice honestly really does apply when it comes to content creation and just be yourself perfection is completely unattainable don't even try to strive for it because it's not real (laughs) i think i did a lot of that trying to make the cookie cutter content at one point and it just didn't it just didn't feel natural and I regretted it so much I felt like I wasted a lot of time being a creator trying to be the perfect creator when that doesn't exist there is no perfect creator I think what people like about creators is we're all different you get something different from everybody Mm -hmm. that's why a lot of us follow multiple creators like I myself have like a lot of creators I like because I like watching this girl get ready but I like watching this girl's makeup Mm -hmm. and this girl's you know vlogs of her day I think that um I think some more advice I'd give is really just understand that people's perception of you, you you also just can't change that. You can't please everyone. I think I had a really hard time trying to please everyone when I first started creating. If people didn't like this, I would stop doing it. But then people would be like, but I liked it. And I was like, okay, well, this is confusing (laughs) because you like it, you don't. But that's the reality. Like this person's going to like it and this person's not going to like it. You should do what you like. And then Whoever likes that will follow. They're always going to follow. People people will find you. Your people will always find you. That's my rule of thumb is I don't need to change harmless content just because someone, you know, chooses that they don't like it. Right. I'm tired of saying great advice, but this is great advice, guys. <laughs> this is really good. Um, Nava, what about you? I would say, honestly, don't feel like you need to spend a lot of money on equipment just to start content Mm. creating like back in the day when I started like my YouTube years I was like I need this camera I need like to get an actual vlog camera xyz and honestly you'd be surprised at how great like your phone can shoot content even like nowadays like right now I'm filming vlogs on like the little camcorders Mm -hmm. also because it's trending right now to do like vlogs on your little camcorder but that thing was like I don't know, 20 bucks and it costs nothing. Quality is ass, but like, (laughs) it's like a vibe, you know? And so don't, don't feel like you have to spend so much money on equipment because you really don't. And people are going to like, just like general basic quality anyways. It's like, you are the quality, if that makes sense. Yeah. I love that. (laughs) That's actually a huge thing. We talk about it insider too. Like secretly I mean maybe it's not a secret I'm about to say it so it won't be a secret anymore but um I film every video that we post on my phone we used to use like very expensive huge cameras and like people feel like they're being advertised to you know what I mean and they're like they don't like relate when it's shot too well like they want to feel like oh like this was just captured on a phone you know what I mean like and also the quality is great like that the iPhones now they can shoot incredibly so 100% agree I'm shooting everything on my phone now so Things have changed. (laughs) Serena, what about you? Um, I would say beyond just like creating, I think all this advice is amazing, Mm -hmm. is really thinking about longevity and how you can take your brand outside of these platforms Mm -hmm. that you actually don't have any control over. Because if TikTok or Instagram or YouTube disappeared, where would be your audience and your following? And this could be as like creating a newsletter, a Patreon, a subscription channel, a product, But I think it's important to not feel like you're financially beholden to brands or these platforms that, like we saw with Twitter, like you just don't know. Um, It's unpredictable. And I think it's important to have control, especially if you're a woman and you are, you know, financially independent. So I think it's about seeing how can you expand the videos that you're making into something that's tangible outside of the social media platforms that we go on. That's incredible advice. How do you, like, um, specifically, like, you're so good at that. Uh, Like, how do you think of, like, things to do? Like, the card game, for example. Like, how did you think of that? I mean, I think that I was, I started a dating show during the pandemic, during Mm -hmm. lockdown. It was a fucking date. And I dated men on Instagram Live, like, 50 (laughs) men over the course of 2020. It was crazy. 
I'm not single anymore, but it was, I was, that, that show didn't bring me anyone, but it was, <laughs> it was such an amazing thing. I connected with my community and I created a card game called Let's Fucking Date with all these icebreaker questions. And from then I created three more iterations of the game and, and sold almost, almost 65,000 copies. So I created that game, not because I was like, I need to create a product, but more like, I was like, I want to create something that I wish I had on dates. And again, like, it's what I was talking about in the beginning about making videos for yourself. Like, what is something you wish you had? What is this? Even if it's like a collab with the smoothie, like I did with Jones, it's right. like, what is the smoothie I drink? Like, it's always going back to yourself because people will resonate with that the same way they do with your content. Um, I, this is like kind of a random question, but I'm like just really curious about the process of like making a smoothie with a brand and what that was like. Like, how did you come up with that? Were they like, oh, what flavor do you want it to be? Or were they like, we're making this and then putting your name on it? What was the process like for that? With Joe and the Juice? No, I mean, I, I don't like slap my name on anything. Like everything right. I do, like, like being a creator, like you are in the edit, you're filming. It's just like, that's what was native to us. So I would never just like slap my name on a product. With that, I mean, they came to me and they were like, we love the do it for the plot slogan that you've created. And we would love to do it for the plot shake. And I was like, great. And then they were like, here are all the ingredients we have. Wow. And <laughs> I, yeah. And I was like, I want it to be strawberry, banana, peanut butter, vegan deliciousness. And, and that's what it was. That's crazy. Yeah. I find that so interesting. I don't know. I would just like never know the process of like how a smoothie is created with, you know what I mean? That's so interesting well, to me. It's a collaborative thing. Like these brands want to make money and you want to make money and you also know what your consumer, your audience wants. So it all has to be authentic right. to you. Okay, I'm going to ask one more question and then I'm going to go to the questions from the viewers. Um, so, okay, this is kind of a random question, but what's the weirdest or funniest comment or DM you received from a fan and how did you respond or did you respond at all? Um, Shallon? <laughs> Oh, not me first. Um, <laughs> I have no idea, honestly. I've had a handful, so I, I'm like racking my brain right now. Probably, probably when I was earlier in my career and I was still working, um, <laughs> like nine to fives, and someone came in and took a picture of me like this. Oh my god! <laughs> sent it to me via my DM and was like, "Hey, I'm behind you." <laughs> I was like, oh, hey. <laughs> oh my god Serena do you have any funny stories I mean I dated men on Instagram live so like you can imagine what, like, the amount um <gasps> I really don't know off the top of my head it's not I mean I will say like I people have come up to me in person and, and they've showed me their do it for the plot tattoo that they've tattooed on wow. their body how so, does that make you yeah. feel like happy that they realize that you're the main fucking character and like everything is for the plot of your life Aww. just glad it resonated <laughs> nava do you have any um i would say one of the recent ones i've gone so i'm recently dating um another creator and um we would just post like these couple of videos and then a creator comment or not creator sorry uh so a follower commented, oh, like, this is like a fake uh, relationship because <laughs> Nava's actually married. And and my boyfriend commented back on the thread and was like, oh, is this how I find out you're actually married? And I'm like, where do people get that I'm married from? Like, it's just, yeah, I'm finding things about my life that I didn't know existed. So <laughs> I guess I'm married. <laughs> Conspiracy theories. That means you've made it, right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Cass, do you have any funny examples? <laughs> Honestly, this is so hard because I work amongst older men all day. And do you really want to know what I've been asked? <laughs> like, it's bad. Um, I, nothing really faces me anymore to think of, like, a weird comment that sticks out. But You're just so, so overexposed to weird comments all the time. <laughs> yeah. The comments online are nothing compared to real-life interactions, though. <laughs> All right, well, it's time for the ex most exciting portion, the questions from the audience. Woo! Okay, let's see what the first one is. Nava, I discovered your channel in 2020, and your videos found me when I was in a very dark place and truly brought me out of it and then helped me find my own true authentic personal style, which was totally influenced by yours. So thank you so much, supporting you always. Okay, not really a question, but go ahead, respond. <laughs> Oh, that is so 
so it's really sweet. cute. Oh, I love you, <laughs> whoever you are. Um, no, that honestly means so much because I think at the end of the day, the reason why I make content is not only because it's fun, but it, it does bring a smile to people's face. And I feel like if I'm truly like my genuine self and like wearing whatever I want and like like loving my body type for what it what it looks like, I hope that it could also inspire others to do the same as well. So that comment makes me so happy and made my day. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, here's a good question. There's a lot of good questions. How do you combat the negative feeling of inauthenticity when creating content, knowing that your goal is to meet certain metrics? I'm struggling a lot with feeling negatively about this, despite knowing I need to push through it. Um, uh, Serena, have any thoughts on this? I think, you know, creating is something that you, it's just you have to put blinders on the same way that you shouldn't. It's you talked about not looking at the follower count or like the brand deals. Like, why are you creating? Think about the intention behind why you're doing something. Is it to make money? Okay, sure. Is it to grow your following? Maybe. But like at the core, what I do, it's like, I just love creating content. Like, and I think everyone on this panel does too. They just like it. They get a joy out of it. So I would focus on the joy that it's bringing you. Right. And then the success and everything else will come with that, right? In time. Because people want to follow someone who's happy and like loves what they're doing. And brands want to get behind someone like that as well. 100%. Mm -hmm. Shalyn, any thoughts? If I'm completely honest, I was so zoned out. Just now. Okay, I'm going to ask it again. <laughs> How do you combat the negative feeling of inauthenticity when creating content, knowing that your goal is to meet certain metrics? Um, dang, that's a good question. No wonder I, was on that. <laughs> I, think, I think, honestly, kind of sticking to what was said previously mm -hmm. is really trying your absolute best to just be yourself and not create like a caricature because I did that a lot coming up and I regretted it so much mm. because when I wanted to stop, people still wanted to see it. And it was kind of hard to like fight my own audience to be like, hey, I want to do this. And they're like, well, I don't care. I want to see this. <laughs> so really just trying your best to like keep and hold on to that genuine authenticity that you literally already have in your body. That's great advice. All right, this is a really, really good question. Do any of our panelists have experience with being stuck in a period of low video views? How did you get out of it, and how did you stay motivated to create? Um, Cass, you want to start? Um, I would say it was hard when I would put kind of a lot of time into a video and then it didn't perform as well as I thought it was going to. Um, and it, it's like hard to see that at first cause it's like, damn, like I wasted a lot of time. But as long as you, when I thought about like how much I enjoyed making the video and that it was something that I wanted to mm. do, it was like, well, whatever, at least I like it. <laughs> um, and just to, get over that. Like you have to just remind yourself, okay, when you get your next 5 million video, like you're not going to think about that one that got like 300 K. Okay. Like, mm -hmm. so, I mean, you just have to think forward. Like you're going to have another video that does really well and it'll all be okay. <laughs> but stand behind your videos no matter what. hundred mm -hmm. percent. Nava, um, again, the question is, do you have an experience of being stuck in a period of low video views? How did you get out of it and stay motivated to create? I want to say kind of same answer as Cass because, con like, if we're being honest, I feel like I'm literally in that little lull right now mm. of low videos, but I think um, it does get a little, you know, disappointing, but you just have to keep consistent. Like, don't let that that like your video low gets you down because you just have to keep posting and posting and like Cass said that like your next big video you won't even think about that one video that happened and you also have to understand that everyone has like highs and lows like you're gonna go through like this roller coaster of views and engagement and you can't always be at consistent high because then you're you know you just I don't know what's going to happen at the end of that, but it's a, it's just life. this is life, so it's going to happen. So you'll get over it or not. It's not like you yourself will get over it, but like you'll get over the, it. The, the phase will pass. Yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Serena? Um, 
Yeah, like when you think of, you know, Beyonce or Taylor Swift <laughs> or any actress or musician, they're not creating all the time. They go to their studio, they make an album, and then like they put it out, and then they go on tour. But when they're on tour, they're not making new music, right? right? I mean, maybe they are, probably not. So this expectation that you have to have a successful video every single day or multiple times a day is out of control, and like you will lose. So like just focus on what is what you want to make and take breaks and just trust the process. But like have so much grace. I know every single creator I know is burnt out because there's this weird expectation to to constantly output, output, output mm. when like that's just like not possible, which is why what I said before is like, are there ways for you to grow your brand that do, doesn't necessarily have to do with making a video? And how can you do that? How can you make more passive income? I think that'll make you feel a little more in control. 100%. Challenge? I think biting off Nava a little bit, it's just really, it really is it's extremely easy to be, to feel discouraged making content, especially when, you know, you put a lot of effort and, you know, you buy the equipment and you do this and that. But I mean, the reality is you really, you, you really do lack control when it comes to stuff like that. Like, I think as long as you're creating content that you really love, um, you're going to find success in that in and of itself, because regardless, even if it takes a little longer versus, you know, maybe doing that like viral dance that people want every day, people will remember you for like, you know, that one unique video that they can only really get that type of thing from watching you, you know, versus they can scroll anywhere and see someone doing like a trending anything. But I think that as long as you're managing, you know, your content time and your personal time, because content creation is like a 24 hour job, um, especially after working nine to fives, I will say the one thing that was cool about that was that I went home and I was done with work. Um, that is not the same thing with this. It, you kind of never clock out and you, you have to, you have to have good pacing and you have to make sure that you make time for yourself away from content. Mm -hmm. And like what was previously said, just making sure that, you know, you can find other ways to create content that isn't always, you know, like putting out this video, you don't have to, you know, record your entire life. Like I stream on top of creating content. So it's really cool to do that. Or, you know, sometimes like I meet people in person and we'll just like sit around and talk and like, they'll meet me from online and we'll sit around and we'll literally just get to know each other. Like you can connect with your audience in like a multitude of different ways and just like finding those different ways and just avoiding burnout as best as you can, because once you get that burnout, it's really hard to get out of it. Yeah. All great answers. Mine's like, a, I have an answer too. It's obviously slightly different because like my videos are not really about me, you know, they're more about like food or things like that. But um, <laughs> if I have videos that like aren't performing as well, like it will really get me down. You know, like I just had a video recently that I was like, this video is going to blow up and it just like nobody watched it. And it just happens like like I said earlier, sometimes it's the things you put the least effort into that blow up. It's like when something doesn't do well, you just have to be like, that's OK, and move on. It's like, let me just try something else. You know what I mean? Like, I'm always trying to just like lean into what works. And when something doesn't work, it's like I grieve it briefly. Like, that's a bummer. And then I'm like, I'm going to not do this anymore. And I move on and try to just like focus on what people seem to be connecting with. And um, it is what it is. Like, I'm trying really hard to work on like not getting too invested in any one video because like that will destroy you kind of <laughs> like it's just like not necessary also um can i, I add something yeah please well on the other side of that when i'm watching a creator that i like like i'm not looking at their views i like, yeah, same. Their video, same you know yeah you have to think that way as well that's a i think that's a good point to you know go off of because you're stressing about the views and the people watching it probably don't care <laughs> that you have like low yeah. views. They liked it and that's all that matters to them. It's 100% true. When I have like a creator, I like, like you guys, <laughs> I just go to the page. I'm like, what's next? Like, I'm like, what's their latest video? You know what I mean? I'm like constantly going. It's like when someone likes you, they'll keep coming back. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, 100% agree. Okay, this next question is for Serena. How do you balance the larger than life character you've built and all with staying authentic? Because I think that she's an extension of me. Mm. I don't think it's like I created a character and like it has nothing to do with me. It's just like my alter ego. It's like my Lady Gaga or Sasha Fierce. Like it's just she's just like a part of me. Um, and she's helped me feel more confident. But I think it's it's worth pointing out that like 
sometimes I like, I don't want to be her and I don't want to make content like her. And then I'm stuck and I'm like, well, who am I on the internet then? Because I have created this character. But I think like, I, I, I've always talked about it. I've always been like very self-aware and very like honest. Like I have Serena and then I have this SFK character. And the more you share with your audience and share in with like what you're going through and like what kind of content you also want to create. Like anytime I've been like, I'm so inspired. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to make. And I make a video about that. It gets so much engagement mm. and it's so much support from the community. I mean like, oh no, we love you. Like make whatever you want. We're very interested. So I don't know. I think like, it's just like, being a human being, you're evolving and like your, your content is going to evolve with you. Right. Like if you, all of us looked at the videos we were making in 2020, like it would, we just were different and that's important to show. hundred percent. Okay. I think we have time for maybe one or two more. Let me just look here. Um, okay. What advice would you give to someone that wants to start being a content creator, but is still working a nine to five? How do you balance that workload? Um, Shallon, you want to take it? <laughs> I would say the only way I felt like I was able to balance it was not feeling like I had to make content. Mm. I think once I started to put the pressure of content on myself when I already had the pressure of a nine to five on myself, it felt completely unmanageable. So what I would just do was, I would kind of just be like, you know, if I got off work and I wanted to make a YouTube video, then I would just get off work and make a YouTube video, you know, instead of planning out hours before like okay when I get home I'm gonna make this video and then I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna make this and it, and then when I get home I'm tired and then now you're making the video and you're like dragging along and it's not the same so just just trying not to make it feel like that's your job in addition to your actual mm -hmm. job I think is what helped me kind of manage the two because it was completely unmanageable when it felt like I had two jobs which was content mm -hmm. and then also my job and you know one of those I had to go to and the other one I did not have to go to so just remember just pace yourself and just like be authentic with it like if you if you wake up in the morning and you're like I'm gonna vlog me making breakfast before work then do that you know it doesn't have to be this like well thought out strategic thing just work around your schedule without exhausting yourself in the process Great advice. Okay, we have time for one more. Unfortunately, they have a few we're not going to get to. Okay, let me see which one I'm going to ask. Okay, I mean, this is like, I'll try to ask two more if we can do it fast. Okay, this one is how do you deal with online scrutiny or negative comments about your content? Does anyone want to raise their hand and answer that one? I'd love to take it away because I've had a lot of that. Go ahead. <laughs> I know I talk a lot. Of <laughs> I've, I've been getting hate since I started, but I think once I really understood that hate is just a part of the process, unfortunately, and you cannot please everyone, kind of back to what I said earlier, it, it becomes a lot easier to just literally ignore it and just remember like, you know what, that's fine. Like everyone's not gonna resonate with you and that that is completely okay. Okay, we have one more. Um, I might be able to do two more, we'll see. Okay, how do you come up with new ideas when you feel like your content has become too repetitive? Anybody? I mean, I would just get out of the house. Like I would just <laughs> stop making, content. like I would go read a book, like go to a museum that gets me super inspired, mm -hmm. watch a documentary about fashion or something that has nothing to do with your content. Like whenever it's like, it's, it's that again, like that real, like you have to make content. It's not going to work. You're not going to feel creative. So it's okay to take breaks. Great. Okay. I think we're going to be able to finish actually getting to all of them. I'm going to ask one more. Um, on average, how many hours a week do you work as a content creator? Um, Nava? Oh, I feel like I'm never not working. <laughs> I feel like it's honestly constant. Um, on average, I don't know if that's a good answer. I don't know if I have 24 hours a day. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because honestly, whenever I have makeup on, I will try to like shoot as much as I can, even if it takes me like the whole day or like just constantly like working on something. So I don't know if my answer was the greatest answer. Do you guys but... all do you all feel that way kind of? Yeah, yeah especially when you create multi platform. Right. For sure. Yeah, I feel like when you're an online personality, it's just like and when your life when like your life is your work. It's just like, I'm sure hard to find a balance and feel like you're working 24 seven. But um, so I assume your answers is like pretty much all the time, but it's important to take breaks, self care, et cetera, <laughs> and try to it's not. Fun, Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just saying it's fun though. It's like a lot of work, but it's fun. So. Amazing. All right, that's it. We did all the questions. Nice, good job us. <laughs>
Thank you guys so, so much for joining us. Again, I love you guys so much, and I will keep following you, and hopefully everyone who watched will either start or continue to follow you guys as well. Um, thank you guys all for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, I hope you learned a lot. And again, the recording will be available to you afterwards on the link from the slide I mentioned earlier. So thank you guys so much. Hope you enjoyed XOXO. <laughs>